And I can uh, tell you now that I'm joined live on the line by Dr. Boutaina Shaban. She's the political advisor to the president of Syria to discuss the situation in the country and relations with the West. Many thanks for coming on to uh, join us, Dr. Shaban. Um, I want to start, if I may, with the reports of collateral damage and civilian targets being hit by Russian and Syrian forces. The claims, the most recent one coming from Turkey that accuses Russia of destroying a school and a hospital. Let's just listen, first of all, to that claim. Russia has launched ballistic missiles from the Caspian Sea into the town of Azaz. They hit a school and a hospital, killing many civilians. So the Turkish Prime Minister making that claim there. I just want to ask you, is it true? You know, um, I don't know whether I heard you properly. Or, uh, is, is your question implying an accusation to uh, uh, Russian or Syrian forces hitting a school? Uh, I didn't, the, the voice was not very clear, really. Yeah, that's but correct. But I would like to say, if that, if that was the, yeah, if that was the question, I would like to say that there are so many uh, unfounded uh, claims that have been made in the uh, Western media about what the Russians and the Syrian army are doing. One, in, in briefly, I can say that what the Syrian army, uh, in cooperation with Russian aircrafts, are doing, are fighting terrorism in Syria. And what we hope for is for other countries to join because this terrorism is a threat to the entire humanity. And it is very clear that once the Syrian army, in cooperation with the Russian, are achieving great success against terrorists, some countries in the region, like Turkey and Saudi Arabia, are going crazy because they are the ones who are supporting terrorism in Syria right from 2011 until now. A question that, that obviously follows from that, and it's a problem that the U.S. and their, the forces that they back face as well. Everybody knows now that terrorists will hide in public facilities such as schools and hospitals. How do you avoid what some might call collateral damage, others will call innocent civilians, from being killed? I think the, the best way to save innocent civilians is to, is to put an end to this terrorism. And there are all the means available if there is a real will to put an end to terrorism. There is Security Council Resolution 2235, which, uh, which forces, which should force countries to stop financing, arming, facilitating, and sending mercenaries and terrorists into Syria. Unfortunately, there is no international will to implement that resolution. We would wish that Russian and American and all countries in the world would join forces in fighting terrorism. This is the only way. Instead of, you know, uh, exchanging accusations which lead nowhere and which have no effect on the ground, really, and it is the Syrian people, unfortunately, who are suffering the end result of this terrorism. And we, we've heard more such accusations like you just mentioned. Sadly, the, the uh, terrorist attacks occurring Wednesday in Turkey. Um, Ankara is blaming Syrian Kurds for those attacks and also claiming that they are backed by the Assad government. How do you respond to those accusations? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you properly. Could you please repeat the question kindly? Yes, certainly. Turkey claims that the attacks that happened in Ankara on Wednesday were carried out by Syrian Kurds. Turkey also says that the Assad government backs the Syrian Kurds. Is there any truth to that? You know, uh, I think Western viewers, I hope, would realize that it was actually Turkey who started the entire war on Syria. We have nine kilometers borders with Turkey. And if you can imagine Syria without these borders, it would have been impossible to start such a war and to bring in so many terrorists from 83 countries from all over the world into Syria. And now, the moment the Syrian army is making real advances in liberating our cities and villages. Turkey is attacking our cities and villages directly because these terrorists were the means for Turkey on the Syrian ground 
And once Turkey saw that these terrorists are failing or they are being defeated, Turkey jumped in to save them and to help them. I hope that Western world would stop looking at Erdogan's government as the means to help them, whether in fighting terrorism or in stopping the refugee crisis. It is Turkey who started the refugee crisis four years ago. It is Turkey who put on tents on the borders well before any Syrian refugee was on any border. Actually, Turkey dismantled our factories, stole our heritage, has ambitions to recreate the Ottoman Empire in the Arab world, and Europe has no interest in following this example. Plus, the Erdogan government is a Muslim Brothers government, and that's why they are launching all this war with their terrorist uh, tools in Syria. And I hope Western media would stop looking at Turkey as a, a, an exit for the crisis or as, as a means of help uh, uh, to end this crisis. Doctor, you talked about Turkish attacks on Kurds on Syrian territory. I know Damascus has written to the UN voicing concern about those Turkish attacks. Has Syria received a response from the UN? You know, honestly, the sound is so bad. I, I can hardly, I can hardly paraphrase That's OK. I'll, I'll, I I'll, re understand. I'll repeat. I was asking uh, about Turkish attacks on Kurds in Syria. I know that Syria has asked the UN about this, expressing its concern. Have you had a reaction, a response from the United Nations? No, actually, unfortunately, we, do not, we did not have yet any response. You know, the Syrian uh, government has sent over 300 letters to the UN about all these attacks and about, you know, from the beginning of the crisis and, until now. And as I said, if there is an honesty in handling the situation, the, the, the Security Council Resolution 2235 is very clear, and it is under Chapter 7. And we ask the UN and we ask the mediators, everybody, that this should be implemented and Turkey should be stopped because it is attacking our cities, attacking our villages, and accusing the Kurds of things that they are not doing, you know? Uh, only in, because it has ambitions in, in our country and it has agreed in our country and it is a Muslim Brother government. That's really the, the, the whole point. And the, the refugee crisis, believe me, has been created, manipulated, and used by Turkey against Europe and against Syria. And the only way I can see very clearly is for Europe and Syria to speak together and believe me, the, the refugee crisis would be solved and terrorism would be eradicated from Syria. Now, the United States has accused Assad of fueling terrorism by fighting what the US describes as moderate opposition. Let's just listen to what was said. He is responsible for ISIL's rise. Assad is a cause, not a cure, of ISIL. So actually just listening to uh, Philip Hammond there, the, uh, the UK uh, uh, Defence Secretary. But the point here is the phrase moderate opposition, effectively Western-backed rebels, uh, that you're fighting in your own backyard. What do you consider them to be, moderate or something else? You, you, you notice how many words uh, people look for, rebels, insurgents, opposition. Anyone who carries arms against civilians, against government, against institutions is a terrorist. Political opposition should be dealing with politics, should be an opposition against a government but by political means, without using arms, without killing people, without beheading people. You remember the, the, the person who ate the heart of a Syrian soldier, that was from the Free Army. And the Free Army is considered to be moderate by some Western countries, Mo moderate opposition. Can terrorism be moderate? Can somebody who is beheading people and killing people and destroying and, and raping women and, and attacking minorities in a country, can those be considered moderate? Can those be considered opposition? I want to talk to you in a Western frame of mind. 
Can Britain or France or the U.S. accept any opposition that carries arms, attacks schools, kills people? I mean, why do, why do they apply terminology on us that does not apply anywhere in the world? You know, this is, this is unacceptable, really.